everybody worries about, about work and the role of humans, when we start to have these systems that are highly automated, producing everything conceivably, and yeah. doing a lot of things, where are humans in that? I think uh, what's left is our humanity, right? The characteristics of human beings that machines don't share, right? So sometimes people use the word empathy uh, for this. Well, machines like, could mimic that. They can mimic it, but they don't know what it's like. Does it matter? Right? Does yeah. the distinction it, matter? It, it, matter, it matters a lot because uh, what it's like then directly affects how you respond to it. Uh, and so, for example, I, if I'm writing a poem, you know, by reading my own poem, I can get a sense of how it would feel for you to read the poem. Or I write a joke, I can see, you know, is it funny, right? right? And this is one of, the, one of the things where machines are like, they are funny, but only by accident right now. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, in principle, you could superficially learn by, you know, if, if I give you, you know, and some people are trying this, right? You know, I, I find you know, five million jokes Gosh. and five million non-jokes, and I try to learn right. a, a distinguishing thing, you know, but that's not the same as actually finding anything funny, right? The machine just doesn't find it funny. So it doesn't, it doesn't really know. And that, I think, you know, in the, in the more complex settings of interpersonal relationships, um, I think we have this comparative advantage. And we may, may, we may even want to reserve uh, the realm of interpersonal relationships for humans. There's some who actually argue that you could actually perhaps show empathy much better with automated systems. Yes, you can have them simulate empathy, but part of what I value is that you actually care, not that you appear to care. Uh, and I think that's, that's really important. Okay, so the, the question is, so interpersonal relationships, great, you know, and there are some professions that do this already, the, um, the executive coach, right, the child, right. uh, child care, um, you know, psychotherapists, um, and so on. And it's a mixed bag as to whether these are well-paid, high-status jobs, but mostly when you look at, you know, in terms of numbers, the vast majority are child care and elder care, which are low-status, low-paid jobs. Yeah. So the question is why? Right? I mean, our children and our parents are like the most precious things, and, and yet we're paying $6 an hour and everything you right. can eat from the fridge right. for someone to look after our children. Whereas, you know, if I've got a broken leg, you know, I'm paying $6,000 an hour to the orthopedic surgeon to fix my broken leg. Why? Well, because the orthopedic surgeon is resting on hundreds of years of medical research and 10 years of training. Whereas, you know, for childcare, there's almost no training and we don't know how to train them because we don't know the science. How does one person improve the life of another, right? We know there are people who can do it, right. but generally speaking, there's no how-to manual, there's no science, there's no engineering of this. We've put enormous resources, you know, in the trillions of dollars into the science and engineering of the cell phone. Right, but not into the science and engineering of how one person can improve the life of another. And I think that's what we're going to need in spades because having material abundance is one thing, having a rich and fulfilling life is another.